What's going on everyone, Tech Me Out here and I am back with part two of best Android apps. Now in this particular video, I have my top five that I'm currently using and wanna to recommend to all of you. So before we even begin this video, if you're excited about what apps I have in store for you this time, let me know by hitting that like button down below. And if you happen to miss the previous best Android apps video that I did, then I'm gonna link that somewhere within the video as well as in the description box. Now it did come to my attention that some of you aren't properly getting notifications that I'm putting out videos. So if you wanna be one of the first to be notified when I release one then just take a quick second to hit the little bell icon beneath like the title of this video if you're on your desktop and if you happen to be on a phone then it's going to be located on the page that has all of my videos that way whenever I release a video you can be present for that notification squad roll call that I have going on so big thank you to these people over here that were present for the previous notification squad roll call that I had going on and without any further ado let's talk <laughs> So first up is one of my personal favorite applications. It's real simple, but it really has helped me in terms of using iPhone and Androids. And that is volume sync. So what it does is it syncs your volume amongst your ringtones, your media, and any other thing that you can normally adjust the volume for individually. It'll then adjust the volume collectively for all of these different areas. So the nice thing is that you can come in here and adjust what actual options will sync across in terms of when you adjust the volume. So maybe you just want your media and your ringtone volume to be synced up then you can turn on or off the option here so as you can see as I adjust my volume here if I were to expand this view you'll notice that as I'm turning one thing down it's turning down the volume for all other things as well the same thing if I turn it up so that's pretty much it. That's the gist of volume sync. Next up, what I have for you is power line. So this one's pretty neat because what it does is it gives you a line at the top of your screen that's going to give pretty much a colorful representation of whatever option you select in here for it to do so. So right now I have it to show my battery life, but if I were to hit the plus symbol here, I can also make it show a visual representation of any of these items in which you see. But for me, the most useful is my battery. So if I tap on that option, it then reveals some more things in which I can do, such as the choice to turn it on or off. I can also change the type. So if I don't want it to be my battery, like I was showing you a second ago, I can make it be any of these instead. I also have the option to change the position on my screen, even the line thickness, as well as the offset of it. So you got a lot of different options in which you can configure for whatever option you have selected to be shown at the top. Coming in at app number three, I have something that's gonna change up your lock screen a bit in terms of looks as well as security. So this one is really nice because it does so much and it's free on top of all of that. So in taking a look here at my lock screen, I got this beautiful wallpaper and nice layout. Wallpaper was selected from within the app in case you want it. But from the lock screen, you have something that's very much like control center on iPhone so that when I slide up down here, it reveals a couple of shortcuts that I might want quick access to one of my favorites being the option to adjust the brightness. And then you can also add shortcuts to your favorite applications so that you can quickly launch to those. You then also have the option to slide to the right and use your standard pin pad, which is you know, pretty much gonna let everyone see your pin number. But if you wanna add an extra level of security so that people can't easily guess what your pin number is, then this is the one you're gonna wanna use. So what you're gonna do is type in your pin. And in my case, it's one, two, one, five and it unlocks your device. But you'll notice if I go back to my lock screen, you'll notice the numbers have now shifted around. So if someone happened to be following the pattern in which your finger was going to unlock your device, they won't be able to guess your passcode because the numbers are not where they were when you typed it in originally. So it in essence shifts the layout of your numbers. Pretty neat. So within the app, you can change a few things such as the theme that you're gonna use, as well as the option to disable your device if the passcode is typed incorrectly three times or more. And the other thing that it'll also do is take a picture of whoever types in your passcode incorrectly and it'll send it to your emails so that as soon as someone is fiddling with your device and happens to guess the wrong passcode, it's gonna snap their photo and you're instantly notified. Now, in the event that you not only wanna lock your device, but you wanna lock certain apps, you can do that as well from within here, but you will need the pro version to do so. Next up, what I have for you is seven weeks, which is a really good habit tracker application in the event you wanna stop a habit or maybe start a habit. And in my case, I want to be more consistent about working out. So therefore I have that particular habit in here. Now I really wanted to recommend this one because it's such a nice and simple interface to get done what you need. So sometimes to me, you just have too many options within these apps and it just starts to look cluttered. 
but I didn't have that issue with this one. So if I were to tap on my habit here, which is working out, I can come in here and tap on the specific day in which I actually completed that habit and mark it as completed or missed. Now, when you choose one of these options, it gives you this really bright and clear, you know, indication of what you've done. So when you come in here and you get the month view, you have a nice clean interface to see how well or not so well you have done in actually completing that particular task. And then if you wanna get a little bit more in depth, you can view your statistics here to get a better glimpse at how you are with that particular goal. And if you really like the app and decide to go with the pro version, then you can access widgets on your home screen as well to be able to better track or monitor your habits in which you're trying to stop or keep. Next up, I have a pretty cool game called Big Hunter. Now this particular game seems simple, but it's a little bit challenging in terms of getting this particular warrior to hunt down and kill these animals. So you have a training mode to kind of get better equipped with the game and it walks you through what you need to do. That way you can practice a little bit before you actually get in and play. But when you're actually ready to take on the challenge and start hunting, that's when things really get interesting. So at the beginning of each round, it's gonna give you a task to complete for that specific round. But gameplay is really simple because all you have to do is tap on the screen to make your warrior back up and then tap and hold on the screen as you adjust the angle in which you want the spirit to go and land. Now where the challenge comes in is that the animal that you're actually trying to hunt does not keep still. So it's gonna try and attack you as you hunt it. So you really have to move sometimes fast or really get your aim as accurate as possible to go ahead and defeat this particular animal before it defeats you. We gotta pause for a second. Look at the moose though when you defeat it. He actually just like collapses backwards. He doesn't fall on his stomach as you would assume he would. I don't know, when I first saw that, I was just cracking up, uh, whatever. But that pretty much sums it up for the apps I have for you in this one. If you're ready for part three, let me know down below in the comment section as well as if you have any apps that you think I might need to check out to share with all of you in the next episode. But if you're still watching this and for whatever reason haven't hit that like or subscribe button, here's your chance to get one more opportunity to do so before this video ends. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.